good morning to all of you listening in today. Very excited to be here. And I'm going to share with you a little bit of Intel's view of how we're seeing increased demand for big memory and some of the basic information about what persistent memory is from our point of view. So I'd like to share with you our vision and how the Optane persistent memory is really playing a critical role in this changing data landscape. A huge number of businesses have either embarked or are embarking on their digital transformation and that AI and machine learning underpin a lot of the business operations and insights in this new model. At Intel, we're seeing some of the same trends. Uh, our viewpoint is more from the compute demand and the data architecture and server demand, but I'd like to highlight the three key trends that I'm seeing that are helping to really propel Intel's Optane persistent memory to the forefront of this new data frontier. You know, unlike many products that come to market today, we're not really a product looking for a problem to solve, but it's a product that solves a very real problem for our customers, and that's always exciting. The first trend is just this ever-increasing demand for compute, and with the advent of chiplet-based architectures that's been emerging over the last several years, increasing demand for the number of cores and increased maturity in the software for more threads, containerization, the demand for compute's not only growing, but it's accelerating if you look at the chart on the left. The memory needed to support the compute is just immense. So between the core count increases and the fact that there's more DIMMs per server in the architectures, it's almost exponential. And it aligns with what we're seeing from industry analysts. If you look at the number of server systems out there that need more than half a terabyte of memory per server, looking at a two socket server on average, you can see that by 2025, most servers are gonna be in what we consider the large memory domain. You know, at the same time, as we're all familiar with Moore's Law in the CPU industry, we noticed that on the CPU side, we started to slow down after years. The difficulty in scaling and the complexity has been high. And we're seeing the same thing happen with DRAM. So as the data set sizes grow, as the demand for memory grows, the base technology of DRAM isn't able to keep up and we're seeing a bigger and bigger gap. So these three trends are really converging into the need for this new memory tier that we've been talking about so that we can provide the capacity and scale of storage and memory with the latency characteristics of DRAM. That brings us to persistent memory. So I'm gonna take a quick look at the traditional memory storage hierarchy with you. I purposely drew this one or, or illustrated this one to show a really large gap between storage and memory. You know, we traditionally like to talk about this pyramid and think about this pyramid as it's just being a continuum <laughs> of opportunity. But, but the truth is there's a giant gap between storage and memory. And for almost 50 years, our architects have been living with that gap. We've had to make those choices between capacity and performance and cost. But traditionally, if you think about all of the other parts of the pyramid, every time we see a 10x reduction in latency, a new tier gets added. So historically, we didn't have CPU cache in the beginning, but over time, we added L1 cache. That worked so well, we added L2 and L3. If you look at tape down at the bottom, start from the bottom, SSDs were added above HDDs, which were added above tape. And so that you would ask the question, why have we never tackled this disproportionately large gap between storage and memory? And I think the answer here is that we needed the confluence of these higher workload demands, hardware that had unique capability, and the cloudification of businesses and the maturity of the workloads to really grow to where it became a, a situation where memory or storage could not deliver and fill this gap. And that brings us to the present. Um, so now when we look at this new pyramid with the way that Intel envisions it, we look at it through a lens of the latency spectrum. And you can see that I've added some latency statistics off to the right of what is typical in these different tiers. And you now see that we've been able to round out that large gap between the Optane SSDs and Optane Persistent Memory, which we're here to talk about today. So keeping in mind that workloads have changed over the last several years, I'll use the example of e-commerce. You know, why doesn't e-commerce rely on tape for its hot applications? Or why doesn't TikTok use tape to recommend videos to all the teenagers in the world? And, you know, the answer is that the latency just would not be sufficient. It's not viable anymore, probably since the 80s. And as these workloads have gotten bigger and more complex, we're starting to see that every application has its own level of what's acceptable for real-time performance. It might be five seconds for real-time video analysis or half a second for video recommendations. So in this new data landscape, the latency is really critical and has to be matched to the usage model. 
Now, if you've never heard of persistent memory before, I'm just gonna do a quick aside because I never know where the level of understanding of this product is. So I just wanted to kind of take you on a quick journey of what it is and why it's so unique. It's both memory and storage, but neither. And that's a hard concept to get out there. But it's a device that looks like a memory dim, sits on the memory bus, but once the data is written to the device, because of the underlying media, it has the capability to be immediately permanently written. We call that persistence. And it has the characteristics of storage at the same time, large capacity, data is not lost, but the performance is exceptionally high, mainly because it sits on the memory bus, but also because it's byte addressable. So let's just start really quickly with the media. The material used for read-write was developed at Intel, and it's really a revolutionary technology. We call it resistive memory technology. It's a completely different material than you've seen before in either NAND or DRAM. You can just set or reset it. There's no need for garbage collection. There's no need to manage write amplification because it's just immediately persistent natively. The other benefit is that it's byte addressable because of the construction of the media, and it sits on the memory bus. So you don't have to pay that penalty for latency for going out to the drive, packaging it up into blocks and pages. So there's really nothing else like it on the market today. It's so unique. So on the next slide, a quick flyby. You know, we're seeing a lot of success and adoption in the area of both database and analytics because they're so closely tied. So as you all know, databases underpin everything that we do. And these companies that are transforming to use advanced analytics to drive their businesses need those databases and they need them to be faster. We also see that as companies are transitioning into the cloud, the need for virtualized infrastructure, hybrid infrastructure, and containerization just takes those elements and combines them into a perfect storm where we're just seeing an incredible amount of success in any kind of latency dependent application. Now you might see there is a category called yet to be discovered. And this is where I start to get so excited. I've been on this journey for multiple years with Intel. Intel is deeply committed to seeing this technology take off. And you know that you have something great on your hands when you start to see companies and industries and products developed from the ground up around the technology. So the various ways that the ecosystem uses persistent memory can be visualized in four categories. I've created a quadrant here where the vertical axis shows the level of software effort required for modification and horizontally whether or not the use case is volatile like DRAM or persistent like storage. The two bottom boxes require minimal to no software optimizations, while the top two bring the maximum value in terms of capability and performance. If you start in the bottom left quadrant, the product will work out of the box without software optimization but the application doesn't control the data placement and the performance can vary by workload. Moving to the right lower quadrant, with the addition of a persistent memory aware hypervisor or operating system, data can be written and retrieved persistently, more like storage, and the application sees the device as super fast block storage. But our experience has shown that we can extract the most value from what PMEM has to offer by modifying the application to achieve byte addressable storage or memory on the memory bus. The upper boxes represent this high return category for both volatile or persistent use cases. The key thing to understand about persistent memory programming is that the operating modes allow the product to be usable by any application now, but over time we're working to influence the ecosystem towards app direct enablement through our partners and the use of our open programming models for persistent memories. I hope that you found this overview of Optane Persistent Memory helpful today. I know we've just scratched the surface, but let me leave you with a key takeaway of this section. Over the last few years, data and compute workload size and complexity has increased. Different applications have their own level of acceptable latency for real-time performance that has to be achieved. And Intel Optane Persistent Memory provides an immense opportunity to speed up that time to value and insight for today's data-intensive workloads. For more information, please navigate to the URL below to find out how you can make the most of this opportunity. Thanks.